What's up, everybody? Welcome to 96.9 The Cat. Oh, America's greatest country music station. I'm Chad Michael Doodly Bop Bop Beep Bop Skedaddle Ennis. And we've got here my co host, Adam, cool as a crooked cop, Gumby. What's up, Adam? What about now? <laughs> How are you doing, Chad? We're on the radio singing about country. Oh, man. Is that what they do? That's what they do. That's what them country music stars do. They do that, and they shout a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> you know what's funny? You know what's funny, Chad? Is that what's me funny? and you are both from the South. Mm -hmm. Don't really have a... I think I have a more of a Southern accent than you do, and mine's pretty light. But, you know, I can kick it up real good, and we can just do this all show. I got no problem with it at all. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm talking you, about? You get me with my family? You get me with my family, and we do... You start talking like that on, like, as a, as a, as a joke, and then... It keeps going. Well, shit. There in South Carolina. Fall right into that joke. Yep. It becomes habit. And damn it. Damn it. Here I am. I'm Now I'm living out in the sticks, out in the boonies, uh, down it, going to Walmart down in the holler, having a good old time. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Respawn Aim Fire, the not country music podcast where we talk about video games. It's a kick-ass irreverent gaming podcast. We are uh, streaming right now live, as you can catch us most Sunday evenings from... 8.30 p.m.-ish Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash idiots um, to sometime into the night. That's uh, how long it goes. We're actually, this is one of two today, so you're going to get a double feature today if you're watching live. If not, you're just getting two podcasts this week, one of these and a barf. You can also catch us on Tuesday mornings on demand on YouTube and podcast services at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Adam. Before I jump into yes. any of this stuff, you mentioned a really intriguing, fun thing that was going to be similar to Arthur. <laughs> what Arthur was to last episode, you have something yeah. new for this episode. What is that thing? Because I hope it's not country music. This, yeah, this was going to be my Arthur for this episode, but we started on the country music thing, and I typed into Google, country singing man married to country girl, <laughs> and it gave me a great list. But Nine so, of them, speaking actually. Of, it's nine, nine couples. Speaking of it, though, I did have a friend, a guy I work with. His name's Hootie. That's his, that's his nickname. Right, not his, right. his God-given name. And, and uh, his he friend, his tennis. buddy Blowfish. Hootie and Mr. Blowfish hanging out together. Yep. Uh, hanging out together down there. Uh, and he went to Tennessee on vacation, and he brought me back a little gift. And I was like, thank you very much. And right now, I need a choice from you, or if there's anybody in the chat, they can tell me as well. I have three flavors of hard Mountain Dew. And I need you to tell me which one to drink. It. I have all three. I think there's three. He gave me three. Wait a minute. But we what? have hard. I have three flavors in front of me. Mm -hmm. All I we knew have... that existed was the Baja Blast. Yeah, we have Baja Blast right here in front of me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's choice number one. Choice number two, Black Cherry. It's got some kind of bear on it. What? And then choice number three is... Uh, looks just like normal Mountain Dew. It's got an eagle on it. It's green. So I'm assuming it's just oh normal my God. Mountain Dew flavor. Oh, my God. But, all I zero need sugar, it. and I couldn't. We don't have it in my state, but he went to Tennessee and he got it and brought it back to me. And like, thank you, Hootie, Mister Blowfish. So, which one do you want me to drink? Oh God! Well, I'm looking up right now. There's Baja Blast, Black Cherry, Watermelon, and Mountain Dew. Um, so those are okay. the four flavors that are available. You have to be 21 to even enter the website. There's gonna be dicks in this site. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm 21. Let me in. Sorry. Uh, you should drink. I'm really interested in the black cherry, actually. Black I, cherry. I know yeah, what Baja Blast is. I know what Mountain Dew is. I don't know what black yeah. cherry Mountain Dew is. Ooh, Find near me. Sense. Put in my zip code. San Jose. Right. Please tell me. Oh, butts in a half shell. No results. This is fantastic. What about I'm gonna be in LA? This is This is probably my favorite like seltzer hard drink that I've had. God I think damn it's better it, than Adam. You're not making White this any Claw. better. I'm sorry, better than White Claw, better than Truly. Like, this tastes like a Mountain Dew, and it's got that slight hint at the end, but it just tastes like normal-ass Mountain Dew, and I'm going to get drunk. So, <laughs> Damn awesome. It. It's not in the entire state of California. Mm-hmm. Nevada. What if I just make a, a... Nope, not in Nevada. A quick trip. Damn it. I don't know where it is. That's one thing. The fact that he brought it up to me was amazing, because I didn't know it was anywhere near me. But apparently it's in Nashville. Why do they... Why do they even have a website? It's like, hey, find it near you if it's going to be in none of the states. Why don't they just have a list of the three states it's in? 
Yeah, I think it's like in five states or something. It's got to be something ridiculous. But Frequently asked questions. Where is hard Mountain Dew sold? Iowa, Tennessee, and Florida. <laughs> it's literally three states. <laughs> literally three states. <laughs> and he went to the one that they have it. Well, look oh at that. Oh, my God. These uh, are collector's uh, items. So I better save these bad boys. Yeah, God. I'm so freaking jealous because they released those in February, and we were supposed to have them for my birthday yeah. when we played Witch Queen together. And they just couldn't get them. No, nope, just couldn't get them. Damn it. Iowa, Tennessee, and Florida. What that Iowa one? What an interesting yeah, right? choice for a state. Mm-hmm. That's good though. I'm sorry to tell you, it's very good. Damn it. I have, I have like seven white claws and three Bud Light seltzers in my refrigerator that are from last June. They're trash. They're, they're, they're trash. trash. They're trash. Awful. I don't want to drink them. I don't want to drink them. This is Martin. This is a Mountain Dew hard household. Just letting you know. In this house, we <laughs> praise the Lord and drink Mountain Dew hard. <laughs> praise Dale and Art. Drink hard Mountain Dew. Actually, I Hell like yeah, the, brother. I like the idea. <laughs> I like the naming convention that you've started. Just Mountain Dew hard. I, yeah. I like that. Is that is that actually what it's called? Mountain Dew hard. Well, technically, it's hard Mountain Dew, but I'm saying no, Mountain Dew hard. No, it's Mountain that's Dew hard. That's life. what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want none of that Mountain Dew soft shit. All other Mountain Dew is now Mountain Dew soft. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. So more Mountain Dew, I'm sure, to come throughout the rest of the show. But we also have Jeff Keeley, old Kiki. Do you love me? Making moves. Xbox has got a streaming stick. If you join the from the Go Live notification, you know that. Xbox got a streaming stick coming. What? And then Square Enix. We got a lot of Square Enix today. <laughs> we have literally one of the least games ever played from Square Enix. We'll get to that later. But we're going to start... By Embracer buying what Square Enix hates. This comes from multiple sources, including, say it out loud, everyone, all together with me, George Yang. George Yang. Yes, yes. I made a point to include him in the story. That's because he's he's important. George Yang, guy gets around. How much are you want to bet? Multiple sources is just all the different sources, all of them written by George Yang, but he just shopped it to a bunch of different sites. No, legitimately, there were multiple stories around the same thing, all written by George Yang on multiple websites. There you go, man. He's just out there hustling. You go to the subject matter expert, and everyone gets a piece of that. All right, here's the rundown. Embracer Group. I'm going to pause right there, actually. A lot of people might not know. Who is Embracer Group? You might know but them by their previous name, THQ Nordic, which was the group that owned... Another group called THQ Nordic as well. <laughs> and to uh, to keep the confusion uh, away, they changed their name to Embracer Group. So they have the THQ Nordic, a.k.a. Embracer Group, is the group that's been buying up hundreds of IPs. All of those like those single A or B tier uh, IPs over the years that you loved as a kid that haven't had a game made in 20 years. That's what Embracer Group owns. In addition mm -hmm. to a bunch of uh, developers, I think they said they now own like over 100 studios or something like that. I can't remember if it's in the story. We might get to it. We might not. Anyway, Embracer Group has announced that it has acquired Crystal Dynamics, Big Guns there, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal, and a catalog of IPs from Square Enix. The $300 million deal will see IPs such as Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Thief, Legacy of Cain, and more than 50 back catalog games added to Embracer's portfolio. Wow! Woo! It's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. That's probably the biggest get that Embracer Group has in their entire catalog. To be able to get Tomb Raider. High profile. Yeah. Yeah, high pro profile. And Crystal sure. Dynamics. Jeez. So yeah, a couple of big name Western studios and a bunch of IPs from Square Enix. The deal will see Square Enix offload all of its Western game development studios to Embracer Group, which includes the likes of upcoming Tomb Raider that is currently development at uh, Crystal Dynamics. The purchase is expected to be completed during the second quarter of Embracer's financial year, which is July through September of 2022. In a statement, Square Enix said that the deal, quote, enables the launch of new businesses by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, AI, and the cloud. Two thumbs down from Adam. Two thumbs down also from this guy. The thumbs are pointing at me, but I'm below the thumbs. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of fancy words that Square Enix is going to say on a press call so that its shareholders say, oh, you're doing the future? Great. Throw money at it. That's exactly what this is. Mm. 
Continuing to quote, going forward, the company's development function will comprise its studios in Japan, Square Enix External Studios, and Square Enix Collective. The company's overseas studios will continue to publish franchises such as Just Cause, Outriders, and Life is Strange. So they basically are they're keeping they're keeping their their Japan centric stuff uh, and a couple of their smaller things too. Uh, just as a reminder, here's a little blurb about Tomb Raider and its sales, so we know how big of a get this is. Following Embracer Group's agreement to purchase, the company shared a timeline of the Tomb Raider franchise. According to the timeline, Tomb Raider has sold 88 million units since 1996, with 38 million of the lifetime sales coming from the reboot trilogy alone. And additionally, the franchise saw more than 53 million paid mobile downloads from entries such as Lara Croft Relic Run and Lara Croft Go. God, do you remember when mobile games like, like Temple Run were like the shit? Temple Run was the biggest thing in the world. It was so big. Temple Run 2? Oh, boy. <laughs> and Sonic Dash. God, getting in those mobile games. Woo! Uh, those of you in the chat, we got Fez there with a dinosaur and a Pikachu. We got DF and Smitty in the, in the chat. Let us know what your favorite Square Enix franchise that is now going to be owned by the Embracer Group is. We got one last part here. An analyst named Lewis Ward has weighed in. He's a gaming research director at IDC, and he says that Square's revenue growth and profits were actually decent over the last nine months, which may have prompted the company to sell most of the crown jewels. His words, not mine. But then he says, the sale price was surprisingly low, if that's the case. Here's a quote. The problem I have with the scenario is that $300 million for a company that generated well over $2.4 billion last year doesn't feel like a great haul at all, Ward said. If Embracer was throwing tons of money their way, it would make sense to sell it in this heightened M&A atmosphere. That's mergers and acquisitions. But $300 million strikes me as a price tag for a highly distressed company, given their recent revenue results. It's closer to Activision's, pro Activision's proposed buyout by Microsoft from this perspective. So there must be more to the story that I just know about that helps explain it, that I just don't know about that helps explain it. It's a bit of a head scratcher. Adam, that's, that's the rundown. That's all the news around it that we're going to be discussing today. Mm -hmm. I know that you actually just did a segment uh, about this on the Pixel Street podcast with John. Yeah. Tell my me a little boy, bit about boy, how you're feeling about Square Enix and Embracer Group. Ugh, it's real interesting. Well, first of all, like I, I said it then and I'll say it now, thank God for those Western companies because Square Enix hated them for no reason at all. Like you make good games, you disappoint it. We don't like you. We hate you. You're you're too pretty to be at the prom with us or whatever <laughs> their reason was. So good for them. I hope that they can do good things at Embracer because Embracer is, you know, they just own everything, but like their output is just like, oh, here's a remaster of a thing. So I would like to see them, you know, like use those, what you bought for, you know, like a good. Yeah. Um, I think so the most I'm recent thing that best. people can, can associate with Embracer, like an original thing that came from them recently was Biomutant came yeah. out of that which didn't do too well either that's fine i mean basically that company's thq but it's like hey now that you got some of the big boys maybe you can do some other things um so again good for them for getting out from underneath it square enix i don't know what they're doing honestly to me it seems like again like we were talking about that 300 million doesn't make sense so i think i was reading in depth more on that article but it's like okay they made they made 2.4 billion but like actual like profit wasn't a ton like it made profit but it wasn't a lot so they're just like they're just like hey get rid of it it's like whenever you're moving a couch and then you're like it's too heavy and some dude in a truck comes by like if you want to pick this up you can just have it i don't yeah. want to deal with it <laughs> yeah. so like i'm not out any less it is what it is so it seems to me like they're just like hey we don't want to deal with anything in the west and we'll just they're literally just going to make final fantasy and kingdom hearts from now on is what it looks like to me yeah which i mean Good for you. Some people were talking about a PlayStation acquisition. I don't necessarily know because wouldn't you keep those other studios so that you were worth more money if you wanted to be bought? Right? It makes I... more sense to be like, oh, I'm keeping, oh, look at all this stuff we have. We're worth so much money compared to, we got rid of a bunch of it for nothing. Now buy us. So, well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Yeah. The the purchase price to me is, is a little bit of a shocker. Fez says the same thing here too. It's an interesting purchase price. would assume they're worth much more. But it's... And when I think about it, it's like they're they're not selling Square Enix, the company. They're selling a few yeah. development studios and a handful of, not a handful, 50 plus IPs that in their eyes weren't even doing well for them anyway. 
Like Tomb Raider, as good as like 88 million units, 36 million from the, the most recent trilogy. Like that's that's awesome. But Square Enix always, we've talked about it on the show before, like they're always disappointed in it. And they're like, oh, it didn't meet expectations. And we're like, what freaking wild expectations did you have for this? It turned a profit. It's it's selling gangbusters. So it's like all the stuff that they didn't want and that's not necessarily doing well for their standard of well. And they're keeping, like you said, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, Dragon Quest, like all of the big hitters that they've had for decades that are just doing so well for them uh, in all these spaces. And I feel like this is a little bit of... uh, Crystal Dynamics has been an interesting studio for them. Like with Tomb Raider... Again, they they said, hey, this didn't sell well. Then Avengers comes out, didn't sell well. They didn't quite know what to do with it. And then they're like, hey, you can also borrow Crystal Dynamics to work on the initiatives thing at Microsoft. And so I feel like these studios are probably things that like Square Enix is a very Japanese company. Like, we don't know what to do with you. We we thought that we could branch out and expand our reach to the Western audience. We just we just don't know how to fucking manage you. We don't know how to how to work with you. We don't know what you do and we don't understand it. And so I think this is them just saying, let's get a little bit of money for these things so that they can go off and develop and be their own wonderful selves outside of our household. And then we'll continue to raise the kids that we understand and that get us. They're, it's like a an adopted kid that are like, we're going to return you to the to the foster agency. Like, Can you do that? <laughs> like, if it, Well, okay, it's a foster kid. It's one of the foster kids the foster where you're kid. like, I, I don't, you're just a problem child. Not bad, but you're just like, mm, you don't mesh with our family. Sorry, we're going to get rid of you. And we'll keep the ones that are really good that we mesh with. Yeah, and that foster kid goes says. on to become Elon Musk. <laughs> like him or not, he's got money. <laughs> yep. Um, that's my thing. It's just I hope that these teams get to do, like, again, everyone knows I love Crystal. Crystal's great. I know it's Montreal. Like, if, if this means that, okay, now we're not under Square Enix and they're complaining, can we do another Guardians? Because Guardians is awesome. Can we do it? And Bracer's like... Absolutely. We sold a bunch of SpongeBob and destroy all humans. Here's some money to go make uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So like, I just hope that it means we get to keep getting good games from those companies that were always a disappointment for no reason. And then, you know, Square Enix keep making Final Fantasy 25 and hope you do well. Yeah. Hopefully this this increased focus on the few things that they're doing well, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Kingdom Hearts near is near automata like that series is that them too i think it is i think near is platinum is it i will search it yeah that sounds right maybe the ip is square and platinum just develops it i don't know anyway uh, hopefully them focusing on those things allows them to um get a handle on by square enix yeah okay just get a handle on on their release dates and their calendar and all of that kind of stuff so that things are coming up more reliably because now that they don't have all of those 50 plus IPs to rely on bringing in revenue all the time, they've got to get more of what they actually do sell out the door. You make a good point because, like, you know, i am I'm never been a huge Final Fantasy person. You know, I've been interested in playing Remake or 7 Remake forever. I've had it installed forever, just haven't hit start on it. But, you know, instead of waiting 10 years between that and then Kingdom Hearts 4 taking 11 years or whatever, mm-hmm. if it's like, all right, now we can just focus on this. And if that's quicker, I think that's good for those fans. You know, if that's what happens, I don't see that being a bad thing. And it's just, it's better than them like, all right, we're closing down Square Enix or uh, Montreal and we're closing down Crystal because we just don't know what to do with them. Like, let them free and, you know, everyone go their side. It's like a, like a, a divorce, you know, not anything like Tim McGraw and his wife, the country singing <laughs> lady. Hill. Uh, Faith Hill, like <laughs> country lady. together forever. Country music man and country music lady. <laughs> country music lady. It'll be an amical divorce, and it's like, oh, everything's fine. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. So that's what I hope. Yeah, me too. Uh, again, we'll we'll keep eyes on it, see what comes of it. I think it's just going to be good for those studios. I think it's going to be good for Square Enix, and it's a great get for Embracer Group for a very cheap price. Very cheap. All right. Let's move on to playtime, where we talk about what we played this week. We've got a, a bunch of alphabet soup here. Um, so I will, I'm going to start with mine just because it's a very short, quick list. And then I'm going to, it's going to take me 30 seconds, then we'll jump over to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so starting with B-T-T-T-S-T-E-W, that's Batman the Telltale series, The Enemy Within. I thought it was something bitter stew or something <laughs> like that. I didn't know what it was. Uh, no, that was our, um, that's our barf game for the month of April. I played it. I also played the first one. We are actually recording that barf episode right after this. So stick around on Twitch if you want to see us talk about The Enemy Within. 
Um, and then I played Destiny, the Guardian Games, DTGG. It is Olympics time for the next two weeks in Destiny. And uh, man, it's a grind. It's a grind. It's a fun grind. Cool mechanics, mm -hmm. cool shaders, cool armor. Uh, I'm loving it. Great new like activity, match made, tough activity in this really difficult strike. Um, so I'm grinding a lot, having fun, unlocking medals and shit like that. And hopefully Warlocks are going to win. We were in the lead for the first few days. And then those fucking hunters came in and stole it right from underneath of us. So we're nearing the end of the first week right now and hunters are in the lead. So if you play Destiny, Fezd in the chat, I know you play Destiny. You better hop on a Warlock. You're not one of those Titan guys, are you? You're not a Titan. You're not a DF and Smitty Titan, are you? We go, hope not. Go hop on your Warlock and go earn a bunch of medals for me. Don't you have silver or something? I saw you say something on Twitter about silver going for platinum. I don't know what's going on. So just before this podcast, I finally got gold level gold. medals. Yep. Right. And I have until Tuesday morning to get the platinum. And then it all resets Tuesday morning. Question, not a question, more of an observation. I understand the medal system, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Mm -hmm. um, the Olympics don't have platinum medals. So why is gold not the top? Well, technically it's the Guardian Games. It's not the Olympics. You said it was the Olympics of Destiny. I said it's, the, it's for me to relate that thing. It's called association. For, for those people who don't understand Destiny, I want to give you something tangible that you do understand to relate it to. <laughs> Let me tell you something, big dog, I don't approve. I prefer it to be like the Olympics. <laughs> I just need the napkin underneath my sunglasses. You just need a bib. I want you to have a bib. <laughs> With a big lobster on it. Yeah. Uh, so the last thing that I played is actually something you played too. So uh, I'll wait till you talk about it and then we'll discuss it both together. So what else did you play, Adam? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played some more Elden Ring. I'm, you know, going, moving through that, playing with the map, having a grand old time. Uh, yep, just a little bit more of that. And then I started playing XCOM 2 on PC because I love XCOM, love XCOM 2. I beat it on console, but I'm like, you know what has mods? The PC. So I'm going to restart it over there, download a bunch of ridiculous skins. I think that there's skins and silly stuff, you know, plays like Elmo or whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to look and see. I just heard that someone just, I was listening to a podcast and they're like, oh man, XCOM has a lot of cool mods on PC. I'm like, you know what? I've already got installed. Woohoo, baby, we're going back. <laughs> Didn't you buy that entire like series of games for like 12 bucks or something? Yeah, but the entire collection, it was like $17. And it's like That's normally wild. it's $250, and right now it's $17. i am like, you know what? I have to buy no matter what. It's this right here. But then that brings me to... What is that? Is that a, <gasps> is that a segment? What? 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 Is there a segment from Adam? Mountain Dew Hard. Segment from Adam. Sponsored by you. Segment from Adam. Wow! Country. <laughs> that was rock more than country <laughs> but the uh, wow ended up like it's it was a you couldn't hear it from my voice but it was a slide mm -hmm. guitar it was like wow. okay that's a cat <laughs> should, be, yeah. should have had a banjo <laughs> but dum 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 square like a or pig was, oh god uh yeah so segment <laughs> from adam this week i was like hey you know what i'm gonna do we we do these uh things once while called like you know raf reviews right we'll, we'll sit down We'll go through a game and we'll like normally break it away and like have it like as its own episode. And we were started decided uh, to play Trek to Yomi and I got about an hour in and I said, well, this is not going to deserve to be its entire breakout episode. So I'm just going to do it in the middle of the normal episode. Uh, so, yeah, right now, rap reviews for Trek to Yomi. It's a new game. It just came out on May 5th. Uh, on everything. Also on Xbox Game Pass, which is the way that I played it. Same uh, Trek to Yomi. Yeah, it is a side-scroller action game developed by Wild Hog uh, and published by Devolver. It is basically black and white, Kurosawa, side-scroller samurai game. Um, and I played it, so I played it, I think, a total of two hours or so. I believe the game's like five and a half or six total. Uh, I believe about two, maybe to three. I think I'm, I'm the beginning of Act 3. Uh, how far did you get into it? Because you also played it as well. I got to, I played a little over an hour. There are seven chapters total, and I played a little bit into Chapter 3. Okay, yeah. So we're about the same spot there. Yeah. Um, and the reason that this is in a breakout episode is because I don't think I want to finish this video game. I would not like to finish this. No, thank you. <laughs> Me either. The thing about this is that the game is gorgeous. I love, again, mm -hmm. they were like, hey... Kurosawa, that's cool. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Black and white samurai movies, that is dope. Um, and they go for that aesthetic. 
and they have it's all Japanese voice acting. All that is cool. There's film grain. You can turn that on and off. Um, whenever you get in fights, it's like I love how like you're walking. So it's like 3D, but then like a lot of times when you fight, it goes 2D. Yeah. So like you'll be walking up to a bridge, and then it's like, you know, then it's like a 2D plane on the bridge, and everyone. It's so dark that like your characters are just outlined. Like, oh, these are such cool artistic things. That's awesome. And then you play the video game, and it's not bad. It just feels like, it feels like a launch game. It feels like a platform action game that would launch on a console like it reminded me a lot of um when the xbox one and the ps4 launched there was a game called max curse of brotherhood which was apparently like an older title that got re-released or whatever and it was it was a launch title and it was a platformer and it was like it was i think it was like one of the first unity games or something like that and it's like it feels like that where it's like oh yeah you know the the controls feel kind of like sticky but like not respond. It doesn't feel fluid, right? right? Especially like something playing something like Elden Ring or you know any From games or you know literally any action game, which feels like really fluid and fast and all this. And it it just doesn't. And it kind of feels just like yeah, it feels like you know an indie game that they're like, hey, let's do a side scroller, and the gameplay is okay at best. Like this game could absolutely probably be on mobile or on Switch, and it feels like a game that you would find on the eShop for fifteen bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I echo a lot of what you what you mentioned. For me, it kind of it brings me back to my thoughts on the Order 1886, where that game is not a good game, but it is a very interesting game that takes a lot of cool risks. That like inter- I think interesting is the word that describes this game. As you mentioned, like it it is a really faithful like Kurosawa um like homage to those films. It is like it's got the grain, it's got the the uh, the entire aesthetic of it is really cool. And it, you're a samurai, you're walking. It's how fucking badass is that? But it's still it's just not a good game underneath of it. They spend so much time focusing on making it feel like those old movies that they forgot to make the game fun. And that's exactly how I felt about 1886. And mm. um. The, a couple of things like like the for instance the filters that they put on top of it is a black and white but it's also so low contrast as well to like replicate replicate that old film and like everything is kind of muddy and it kind of blends together especially with all the grain on top of it too it's just like it's it's difficult for me to really appreciate the visuals if they're all just like so they they all just kind of run together what i do love however is the there's a lot of playing with the foreground and background like one of the mm-hmm. things that stood out to me in chapter two, you're you're fighting on a bridge, but you're seeing it from the perspective of someone out on a boat, like in the river that the bridge is going over. So you, like the camera's yeah. there in the boat in the foreground and like you're up in the background. Well, what that also does is like your character's so tiny way back there on that bridge and the different types of enemies that you're fighting, which are not plentiful. There are only like one or two types so far that I've come across. There are some regular guys, and then there's an armored guy that you have to do slightly different stuff to. But so it's mm-hmm. like it's difficult to figure out what I'm looking at, uh, especially because they're not very visually distinct either. Um, but yeah, it's just not fun. The combat is it's just hitting X to slash. They do have to like, hey, here are some combos you can do: up XX, you can do down XX, you can do XXY, you can do two Ys, and like none of that fucking matters because you're gonna do everything the exact same. You're gonna get to someone, you're gonna parry them, you're gonna slash slash. You're going to get to another person. You're going to yep. parry them. Maybe you'll do a strong attack instead of a slash slash. And they're just like, also like, hey, here's XXY. It's a new powerful combo. And it's like, cool, but everyone dies after the second X and I can never execute the Y. So I never get to do yeah. this cool new combo that you just taught me or finishers. They're like, hey, here's how finishers work. And it's like, cool, but no one ever gets stunned because they're just dead in two swipes. And I was even playing, like it started on easy because you told me, oh yeah, you can probably finish it in like two hours or that's all you'll need to play of it, especially if you start on easy. So I was like, okay, I'll start there. And then I was like, let me bump it up to moderate. And I was playing on moderate. It was like, it's it's the same exact way. And it's like, it it's not interesting or fun. Yeah. And it be, it just becomes very, very, very repetitive. And that's why I started mm-hmm. a little bit of chapter three. And we got through the, for the first two boss battles. And I was like, those really didn't add much to it other than there's now someone with a health bar instead of just a few guys to take out. Um, but I got to chapter three and it just, it looked like a lot more of exactly the same. And I was like, I've seen everything I need to see of this game and I don't enjoy playing it, but it's interesting and in how faithful it is to those old movies. Mm-hmm. Real quick though, you got, we went robot on me right there at the end. Do you want to <gasps> fix that back up and come back in? I don't know how to fix it. Do, uh, uh, 
I think I left last time and came back in, right? Uh, yes. Yes, you did. Right. Hey, what's up? Double me. If you're watching video, you get double me's. Oh, yeah. You're good now. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. It's, it feels like a game that was, uh, so apparently the developer Flying Wild Hog, the people who made the reboots of Shadow Warrior, which are like $40 like budget action games. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, this feels like a small team from those people. Um, cause like, yeah, it's th the idea and the aesthetic is great, but playing it was not enjoyable at all. And, uh, yeah. So like, would I recommend it? No. If no. you have game pass and you're really bored, maybe that's the only, maybe I would not suggest playing this game otherwise. You know, and but... really like just get through the first chapter as a kid and you still have everything you need to see. Like, even though you're an adult in the second chapter, like don't, you know, it's all the same stuff. Don't worry. Yeah. So that is our review for Trek to Yomi. Not great. Stay away. We need we need like a respawn and fire like scale our scale mm -hmm. of game reviews. I'm right. gonna look up like Game Pro magazine from 2003 and see what their scale was and just take that. Okay. okay. I remember somebody being like it was like rent buy don't buy. There was something ridiculous that doesn't apply to nowadays. Yeah, people, rent, right? <laughs> you don't rent games anymore. We just ate them. I but uh, yeah, I would say probably avoid. If you're super bored and just want to look at it, I guess if you have Game Pass, but I would watch a trailer. This is weird because like, so Devolver is just, you know, the just the publisher. Like Katana Zero is like an 8-bit game mm -hmm. that you play as a samurai in a 2D side scroller, which is a hundred times better than this video. Oh, game. yeah. Katana Zero is dope as hell, and this game is not same. I know different development teams, but you know that's just a game that looks interesting as well, but also plays very good. Yeah, and is also a very small. I think that game was maybe like a couple of people. And I feel like better. they're they're Katana Zero is a different type of game though. Yeah, it's like a Hotline it. Miami puzzle type thing almost, where you walk into yeah. a room and you're like, "How am I going to beat all these guys without getting hit?" Whereas this game, I feel like, is much more of a. It, it reminded me a lot of like the old Ninja Turtle beat 'em ups, where mm -hmm. you're just walking screen to screen. Some guys come on. You have a couple of different types of attacks. You're not good at any of them, and you get to the next screen. And that's yeah, it feels so like, slow. Like yeah, doing the combos, yeah. it's like what cadence do I need to hit? Eh, whatever. Yep. Stay away. Stay away. Stay away from my baby Charlie. All right, so that takes us out of playtime and into our quest log. We're going to talk about some news from this week, starting with a biggin'. Summer Game Fest is Facebook official. Remember when that was a thing before no one liked Facebook anymore? Yeah. Eddie McCoot oh, from GameSpot tells it's, us this one. It's complicated with, with Jennifer. <laughs> it's complicated. I fingered my friend's mom. It's complicated. That's, that was a, that was a status. <laughs> I was just trying to think Jeez. of like what's complicated. Well, that that makes things complicated. Yeah, it does. Uh, Summer Game Fest Live 2022 will take place Thursday, June 9th, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Convert that to all of your other times in your head, or using Google. Jeff Keighley will host the event, which promises game announcements and reveals, while it also includes the Day of the Devs event. This is a few days just before Microsoft and Bethesda showcase on June 12th, which we talked about last week. Last year's Summer Game Fest live event was a big show featuring gameplay footage for Elden Ring and the announcement of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which I'm I still haven't played. Damn it. As of yet, however, there is no word on what to expect from Summer, Games Fe Summer Game Fest Live 2022. But the organizer, organizers say you can look forward to, quote, world premieres, trailers, news, and updates from the world's top game developers and platforms. In addition to being streamed on places like YouTube and Twitch, you can also see it in some IMAX theaters. You can go watch Summer Game Fest in IMAX. Oh, I'm very excited for that. V excited. I actually did go see, there was the PlayStation, there were a couple of years that PlayStation streamed their E3 press conference. In, in theaters. theaters. I went and saw that one year in Chicago. And that was pretty cool. The weird thing about IMAX, though, is that, like, the whole thing about IMAX is that it's a different aspect ratio. Like, the screen's taller. Things are developed, are filmed in IMAX for that. And, like, none of these video game trailers and none of this shit's going to be in IMAX aspect ratio. You're insane if you don't think there's going to be big fucking black bars on the top and the bottom of that screen. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, so excited. E3 replacement. It, again, just in the in the absence of E3, we've still got all the E3 announcements. Summer Game Fest, 
Microsoft Bethesda showcase. I'm sure we'll see a few more pop up here in the next couple of weeks before all this happens. So stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned. I am really excited. So I like um, the again, I would like to see. So I was looking and I do apparently have a real IMAX theater next to me. I did not realize it. But when you go to the IMAX website. It is like, oh, no, that's an IMAX certified theater. I don't know if it's the gigantic one that goes like a thousand feet in the air, you know, yeah. but it is cert- certified IMAX. So I might try to go do this. I don't know about that. I probably just stay home because it's easier to stay home. But <laughs> I do like the idea of Summer Game Fest starting June 9th, Xbox June 12th. So like we know the weekend where stuff is going to happen. Yeah. And there should be really big announcements. Uh, and I'm very interested to watch. I liked having it more organized because it was last year was, you know, opening night live. But then Square had one and then Capcom had, which was awful. But I like it was just like, hey. Let Jeff take care of most of it. Roll that into Microsoft. You know, if PlayStation does a state of play or something, or if they do it with Jeff, like if ever, if we can condense it and make it easier, I would prefer that. Because if I get it, Jeff gives us all the third parties. Mm-hmm. Microsoft, Nintendo, and PlayStation do their own thing all on the same weekend. I prefer that compared to like Capcom. I don't care that you are like Resident Evil Village did good. We'll make DLC one day. Goodbye. <laughs> like I don't, I don't need right. that anymore. Like let Jeff take care of that stuff. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for June. It's only a month away, bro. Oh, less than a month, right? What's the day today? Oh, today's the eighth. The oh 8th. yeah, it's one month away. Basically one month away. Yeah. Frick yeah. It is weird though that it's on a Thursday at like why? Why Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific time? To get the weekend started, bro. Yeah, but like if you want people to go to an IMAX theater and see this thing. First of all, a lot of theaters don't open before 11, so they're going to have to open up early for this. And then everyone's like in the middle of their fucking work day. E3 yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern like on the, a Thursday. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's weird. Press conferences used to be on the weekends for E3, except for Sony. I'm sure it'll well, go. Sony was still Monday night. So that people yeah. could still. Damn. Interesting. You're very right. All right. Uh, are you a Fortnite freak? Do you love Fortnite? Do you also have iPhones? You can play it. Uh, Fortnite's back on iOS. This comes from Matt Kim at IGN. Uh, Epic Games and Microsoft are partnering to bring Fortnite to Xbox Cloud Gaming. This mega-hit battle royale is now available to play on PC and even iOS and iPad devices through streaming. So uh, this is a a follow-up from uh, last year's court case where Fortnite has been banned from iOS. Uh, So you have not, up until today, have not been able to play Fortnite for almost an entire year on iPhone and iPad. But anyone interested in playing this uh, Battle Royale now just needs a Microsoft account and an iOS device or Windows PC with internet to begin playing immediately through a browser. You Here's the kicker. You don't even need to subscribe to Xbox Game Pass. Well, that's a big one. Fortnite is free to play through Xbox Cloud Gaming. That's wild. The browser-based version of Fortnite means players can circumvent Apple's decision to delist Fortnite from iOS App Store. NVIDIA did something similar uh, for a limited time when it brought it to GeForce Now. So that's the thing. So if you ever wanted to take place, take part in Xbox Cloud Gaming before this, you had to have an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription, which is $14.99 a month or 30 bucks for two, whatever it is. Um... So now what's really interesting is that they're branching out into free-to-play titles. And Fortnite is not only a free-to-play title, but it also does not require Xbox Gold to play with friends or play online. So this is a completely free way. All you have to do is sign up for a free Microsoft account, and you can now stream this to any device, which is dope. And because it's cloud gaming, it's all like it's immediate, too. Like You don't have to wait for it to download. You don't have to do anything like that. Here's another kicker, Adam. This might be an even better version of Fortnite than the native app itself because this has controller support, which the app mm-hmm. on iOS did not. So uh, if you don't want to play with touch-based controls and you actually want to be competitive, this is a great way to do that on an iOS device. Although you will be competing against other Xbox and PC players, you won't be competing against other mobile players. So they're also going to be using keyboard and mouse or controllers as well. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I mean, we're going to get to it in the next story as well, but I like this direction, right? Yeah. Where it seems like Microsoft is really doubling down besides all the, you know, Epic and Apple getting mad at each stuff, like whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't own those mega corporations, so I don't have a personal stake in that, 
this seems like a funny way to like, oh, we'll get around it by going to a web browser. It's like, all right, yeah. well, I guess they're still fighting, but it is what it is. I'm more interested in for the few like Microsoft is really like, hey, we're really trying to make cloud gaming a thing. It's like, hey, it's free. Like literally, I mean, their whole thing is they want you to sign up with a with a Microsoft account and then use their service. Look, oh shit, the service is good. I should keep doing it. Then again, we'll get more to that in the second story or in the next story. But it's good for everybody because, you know, we get to improve the cloud gaming stuff. Um, people can now play one of the most popular video games in the world for free, completely, on your phone if you want to. And then Microsoft tries to grow their consumer base. And I think it's a good thing. I do hope that Apple and everyone can get that figured out. Because natively would be better, you know, yep. until cloud gets much better. Uh, but for having this as an option right now, not too bad. Can't complain about it. Um, I will continue to play it. Well, not play it. I'll continue to download it on my console when the <laughs> skin comes out, and then play for a couple and play for a couple days. Because hey, guess what? Oh, Wanda just came out in the uh, Fortnite store. Yes, might have she to did. Go buy Wanda, yep. you know, might have to do it. <laughs> I already have all the Star Wars stuff. They brought that back out on May the Fourth, but I already owned all of them, so it was good. Yeah, you you brought up the the point that I think is the biggest distinguishing thing here is that uh, cloud gaming native is the way to go because cloud gaming is just not there yet. And I think back mm. to my especially when it comes to competitive shooters. I think back to my time over Christmas break playing Xbox Cloud Gaming and that Halo event where you had to play every single day to unlock the Christmas stuff. And it was it was literally unplayable on Cloud Gaming on Wi-Fi. I was get, still getting 200 megabits down speed. I was 10 feet from the router and it was rubber banding as hell, freezing. It was, it was unplayable. You plug into Ethernet and it was playable, not ideal, but still playable. Um, and you're, I mean, you're not going to plug your phone into ethernet. You're going to play this on your phone. Yeah. You're not going to plug your phone into ethernet. You can, if you wanted to, but at that point, just get a different system. So we'll see if this is actually good. If they, if, if it helps them improve their infrastructure, if it makes it a little bit better, even on really great Wi-Fi, it was trash. Like that was surprising to me. So opportunities there, but I, I like the direction that they're headed. Yep, I do want to see how this plays, because again, I've used cloud gaming. I didn't play Halo, but I have played multiplayer games, and I've played uh, fighting games, and latency and everything was fine for me, but I also didn't ever try to play Halo on it, which uh, seemed to give you a lot of issues. So I want to see how this works. Yeah. Like, I would like to download that and figure that out. Uh, but either way, like I said, big moves in the gaming industry. Is that what we yeah. talk about? We, is this not a country music podcast? Oh, I mean, big news games? out here in Alabama. Well, hell, get in your Ford Tonka truck uh, Max 250. <laughs> hit on down to the holler and hit the mud bowl and get yourself a nice Coors Light and a hard, a Mountain Dew hard as hell, uh. my favorite beverage. <laughs> oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention in here, I mentioned controller support, but like it also, despite being an Xbox game, it also has the native touchscreen controls too. So that's pretty dope. Uh, speaking of Xbox Game Pass, you might be streaming all of these games directly to your TV coming soon, says Andy Robinson Whoa. at VGC. Uh, it says that Xbox or Microsoft will finally bring Xbox Game Pass streaming directly to TVs and standalone devices in the next year, uh, the claim says. That's according to a new report by GamesBeat, which claims that within the next 12 months, Microsoft plans to release an Xbox streaming device, similar to like an Amazon Fire Stick or a Roku-like Puck, and in addition, it's also planning, planning a Samsung TV app, which will allow users to stream cloud games directly to their televisions without any additional device. The launches are said to be part of the new Xbox Everywhere initiative, which this week saw its first free-to-play title in Fortnite. Adam, it's all connected. It's all connected. Big old circle of streaming goodness. What's interesting is that before we got the reveal of the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, this was rumored to be the cheaper console. Like it was, it, the rumors were there's going to be a really super powerful console to compete with PS5, and then there's going to be a $100 streaming stick, and it's going to be just streaming. And, and that ended up not coming to pass, but it turns out maybe it is coming to pass. Maybe it's still in development. Now, That's what it seems like. What do you think the benefit of the benefit is of having a streaming stick instead of just a built-in app? Like they're planning both, a built-in app to mm. your TVs and your devices, as well as their own standalone device that plugs in like a streaming stick. What do you think the benefit of that is? 
I, so I don't know exactly, but I'm assuming that there's just different store fronts, the store fronts can, the, depending on the type of smart TV you have. So maybe it's just that, you know, like for my TV, uh, it's a Roku is what's on. It's like Roku TV is like, or, what yeah, is like the, the operating, operating system? system? And maybe just like, they won't support that, but it's like, Hey, buy this, however much dongle. And then you can do it there. Cause I know the Samsung TV thing has been like there since the start that like it'll be built into samsung but they never mentioned it so like if you have a sony tv like sony's not going to put a native xbox app but it's like hey just buy the dongle and plug it in your sony tv and it works that's my guess it's just that some people are easier or allow it to work and others won't but if you have the stick it doesn't matter what kind of tv you have yeah i started to think like at first i was like why why a device by itself just build a tv app and then i started thinking about um there are two things that really stood out to me. One is the operating system itself. Like if they can have a really stripped down version of the Xbox OS on this thing, it, like it has a little bit of consistencies. No matter what devices you're on, it's familiar. The controls are all the same. The menus are the same. That can be really helpful. But the other thing to me that really stood out was the controller and the connection to the controller. When you're connected, an Xbox controller to an Xbox, it's not actually using Bluetooth. It's using its own wireless band. And then if you connect like to an iOS device or to a smart TV, you're using a second radio in the controller to connect via Bluetooth instead. With Bluetooth, there's a lot more latency. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that maybe they're like, if you want to, you can use a built-in app on your TV or on your Roku or on your Apple TV or whatever it might be. But... If you want a little bit better performance or you want something native, it's 30 bucks. You can pair a controller to it and you're going to have a little bit better latency. That's the only reason I can think of that. The consistency in OS from experience to experience and then the reduced latency with the controller there. That's that's what comes to mind for me. That or just, you know, quote unquote, dumb TVs. So if you have a TV yeah. before, whatever. Or like me, what we're on looking at now, PC monitor think if you just plug it into one of the usb ports on your pc and then it's like yeah. i can just stream games there uh or it's probably more thing for like uh like apple because like i don't do you guys have the xbox app on your apple no pcs or apple devices there no. you go like i have an xbox app that allows me to stream to it but yeah there's a lot of macs out there plug this in play xbox on your mac yep. on your screen i think it's a good idea to have both options yep well, I like how it's, oh, by the way, Xbox everywhere. When you used to just be like, play anywhere, play anywhere. Now it's Xbox everywhere. Yeah, not just not just anywhere, but like everywhere. You will play Xbox. Are you a Jack Soon in the Box? Be... You will play Xbox at Jack in the Box. <laughs> you have to. Soon you'll be asleep and you'll think it's a dream. But I'm not going to spoil it. Maybe oh. your dreams are something else. Oh, shit. Maybe <laughs> you're playing oh. Xbox Cloud Gaming. Maybe you're not. We've got two more stories on our quest log. The first one is a new mafia game wants to whack your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you love that, don't you? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, this comes from, say it with me, everybody, George Yang at GameSpot. Woo! My boy. There is a new mafia game that is reportedly in production right now and is expected to be a prequel to the original mafia trilogy. According to the report from Kotaku, the new mafia game is still in early development and is codenamed Nero. Additionally, the game will reportedly utilize Unreal Engine 5 instead of the Illusion Engine that powered Mafia 3 and Mafia Definitive Edition Remaster. No other details like release date or platform platforms were included in Kotaku's report. I am very happy to see everyone jumping over to the Unreal Engine 5, like with all that built-in main, support. Uh, less main reason for this story, yeah. Unreal Engine 5, baby. Very happy to see that. Hopefully that just means so thing. much more consistency in our from game to game in terms mm -hmm. of quality and performance and all that kind of stuff. So very happy to see that. Like, do you... Okay, I played Mafia games. I actually like Mafia games a pretty decent amount. I'm not, like, going to do a backflip in my chair. There are very few things that make me do that. But I'm like, I have definitely have a good time with them. And yeah, I don't know what the fuck Illusion Engine is. No. Nope. It was fine, I guess. But Unreal Engine 5 sounds way better to me. Yep. <laughs> you know? Um. And again, the main reason this, because I want to point out Thunder Legend 5, I do like Mafia. That'll be cool to see this game in, you know, five or six years. Um, I want to give a shout out to George Yang. And then I wanted to write the Whack Your Wallet. That's <laughs> the reason this story is here. Just want to let everyone a little no, peek behind That the alone was worth it. In fact, mm -hmm. could have just been a headline. <laughs> whack Your Wallet. Whack Your Wallet. Something else. 
Last story here, another Square Enix one, and this is embarrassing. Square Enix and Babylon's Fall have one fan. You remember that joke where people were like, oh, you're the guy, you're the one guy. They literally have that one guy. Uh, this comes from Andy Robinson at VGC. Babylon's Fall concurrent PC player count briefly dropped to just one person this week. One individual was playing that game on PC. That's according to Steam Charts data, which claims that the game fell to just a single player at midnight BST, British Standard Time, maybe? Sure. Bali Standard Time? BST. On Wednesday, May 4th. The incredible stat comes just two months after Square Enix titles release and follows weeks of dwindling player counts on PC, which is the only platform that can be reliably tracked, even though it's also on PlayStation consoles. Uh, according to the same data, um, the peak that it reached in the last week was 77 players. And the title has averaged over the last month 64 concurrent players at any given time. Woo! That's one of those that I'm sure Square Enix is like, yeah, we can cut this. We can cut this. But they didn't. <laughs> they, they didn't. didn't get rid of like, Platinum Games, hey, you're with us. You're awesome. Yep. This, remember, I remember them come, this game coming out and they're being like, oh, yeah, we wanted. I don't remember if it was Platinum or if it was Square Enix. So, you know, excuse me for whoever said it. But they're like, hey, we're going to get more into games of services. Da, da, da. Like they were talking about like, oh, we're going to make this kind of game. It's the future of stuff. And then one guy was playing it on May the 4th. <laughs> In his defense, everyone else was watching Star Wars. Some kind yeah. of Star Wars thing. All right. That's it for our quest log. And it is time for Game on Game Show. The game on our gaming show. We play a game called Game on the Gaming Show on our game show. Game, 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 game. Adam? Yeah. We don't want to see wild games. We want to see games gone wild. <laughs> it's important to see the transformation. And that's this week's game, is Games Gone Wild. We've previously played this with uh, Game of the Year contenders, mm -hmm. and then we also had uh, like an upcoming this year game version of this game. Um, we've got a lot of Square Enix news this, this week. So we're playing Games Gone Wild with Square Enix properties. Okay. These are Square Enix IPs. They may or may not still belong to Square Enix after this Embracer Group thing. So keep that in mm -hmm. mind. They are traditionally associated with Square Enix and may now be an Embracer Group. They may not. I've got 10 of them here. We'll probably go through like five or six. And if it looks like you're doing really well, then we'll go to some of the harder ones. Otherwise, we'll just okay. cut it off at like five or six. Are you ready for Games Gone Wild? Wait, what do I do again in this game? Oh, yeah. So here's... <laughs> I forgot to tell you what this game is about. So I have taken the names of these franchises, these IPs. I have run them through a thesaurus. And I will tell you the wild name that came out on the other end of the thesaurus. And you try to tell me what game it started as before it went wild. Gotcha. So we're going to start uh, with one of the easier ones. This one is Wyvern Expedition. Dragon Quest. That is I correct. know what Wyvern is because I love D and D, and I know a Wyvern is a dragon that doesn't have arms. Dragons have are uh, quadrupeds with wings mm -hmm. on the back. Wyvern means that the two front arms are also the wings. That is correct. And a lot of people mm -hmm. were given the Game of Thrones show shit because they were technically wyverns, not dragons. The mother of wyverns, huh? Yep. Gotcha. All right, so you got that first one very quickly. We're going to move on to something. Something. We'll kind of still keep it easy. Um, concluding Daydream. Concluding Daydream? Concluding Daydream. So something. Final Fantasy. That is Final Fantasy. That is correct. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I took concluding and was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought Daydream for fantasy. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. But my brain would have never gotten there. All right, here's another one. A little bit tougher, although we did mention it this week. Mm -hmm. Being is bizarre. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to answer the rest of these in a country accent. Being <laughs> is bizarre. <laughs> Being is bizarre. We mentioned it on today's podcast. We huh? have. Yep. Podcast. Right. <laughs> we mentioned podcast. it on today's podcast. On the podcast. <laughs> uh, Being is bizarre. Uh being is bizarre. I believe that would be Laugh is Strange. And that is Laugh is Strange. I'm going to do the rest of this podcast as Paula Dane. <laughs> hey, put some butter in there. Put some, put some butter on it. Butter. 
Put some butter on that. Y'all's Paula Dane. Close the door. Um, Paula's titties are hanging out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about the gift again? You talking about that movie, The Gift, with Joel oh, Ed Edgerton? Woo. Not the Sam Raimi gift, but Joel Edgerton's the gift. A different gift. Yep. Uh, all right. So that was three. You're doing you're doing pretty good with this one. So uh, we're gonna move on to one that's slightly harder. All right. Oh, sorry. We're gonna move on to one that's slightly harder. God bit, from right. God from God from Hmm. Get, uh, God from, huh? God from. Say, some devil or demon. Demon away? Devil away? I don't really... Give me a clue or something. Uh, I, the clue I'll give you for this one is that it's actually Latin. Oh. These are This is a, synonyms for the Latin words. I don't speak... I only speak American, so I do not know what this Latin <laughs> word would be. <laughs> Uh, there's a very popular Oscar Isaac movie. Uh huh. Deus that uses X. these words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, that is Latin because uh, Oscar Isaac is also Latin, and he was in that movie. <laughs> is Oscar Isaac Latin? I think. I think. I believe he is. Uh, I th yeah, because I remember them. Uh, quick aside, because they were talking mm -hmm. about Bad Bunny was going to be in that uh, Spider-Man spinoff movie. He's like the first Latin actor. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Oscar Isaac is some kind of well, Oscar Cuban. Isaac. It's Cuban, yeah. Okay, okay. Which I believe is maybe it's just, Latin or Hispanic. Yeah. I don't know the difference, to be honest with you. I think Hispanic was a made-up word just for like government purposes. And okay. And Latin is like the actual thing. Yeah, he was um, definitely born in Guatemala. We get recency bias in my brain. I thought he was Egyptian. He's actually Jewish in the show. Yeah, isn't that isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah. he's a very right. good actor. That was Day Six. We're gonna do we're gonna do all these. We're gonna go through all these. Ready? Go through them. This Be one. Out. This one is a little bit tougher. We haven't. I don't think we've mentioned this one. Equitable motivation. Oh, good God. <laughs> Equitable motivations. Uh, you're gonna have to give me it because equitable. Like I don't. I don't know what mm -hmm, the. Mm -hmm. mm, nope. Give me a clue. Uh, equitable. Think about like. Think about the courts. Yep. The courts. And what does what does Batman fight for? Justice. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. What's the second word again? Motivation. J Justice cause. Just cause. There you go. Just cause. Yep. Just cause. Absolutely. Justice cause. I like having <laughs> God dang it. We got there. <laughs> um, this next one is is a deep cut, a Square Enix deep cut that maybe you know, deep maybe you cut. don't. Maybe you don't. Here we go. Solar C. Solar C. Solar C. Well, Smack my ass and call me a biscuit. I don't really know. <laughs> no, solar you fucking sea. biscuit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, solar sea. Uh, give me a clue. Solar refers to the sun, which is a star. Uh huh. And sea <laughs> is another word for oh, star ocean. Star ocean. Online. That's right. That's right. That's right. That was maybe Two. that was maybe the hardest one in this whole thing. Um, I didn't know that was Square Enix game, to be honest with you. Yeah, there are a couple on here that were surprised to me, but apparently they publish them now, but most of the development um, is just done elsewhere. Because it was it was like a Sega Dreamcast game back in the day. Yeah, I yeah. Remember. Here, the next one, Burglar. <laughs> Theft. <laughs> Actually, have I told my story about Thief on the podcast before? No, not at all. So I used to work at uh, the Stop of Game, uh, mm -hmm. if you can figure out that uh well, that's a good game riddle. That's wild. Good. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's a Batman figured that one out. Um, so we were working one day and we worked on the bad side of town where a lot of idiots were at. And this guy came in, he's like, I'm looking for a game for my PFO. He said, PFO did not say PS4, said PFO. <laughs> I'm like, all right, sir. And he said, he pulled up a, a case and he said, What's this theft about? <laughs> like, Excuse me, sir. What are you looking for? I'm looking for theft on the P4. I'm like, do you mean thief for the PS4? Because that's what the game that you're holding, sir. And he's like, yeah. What's it about? Like, you're a thief. <laughs> so that's my thief story. I love it. You mean that theft is a game about being a thief? I would have yeah, never known. Couldn't have guessed it. 
All right, we've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three more. All right. I like this one just because it's Finn. Commonwealth Blood Pump. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's something we did after prom. Commonwealth Blood <laughs> Pump. God, Commonwealth State could be another word for Commonwealth. Blood Pump. Uh, I don't know. I don't, what is that? Give me a clue. <laughs> now, blood pump. Think of it. it it's a. It's a thesaurus together for one word. One word is a blood pump. Yep. Yeah. I don't. I'm not a doctor. Uh, what if we flip those words and say thing that pumps blood? Uh, vein. Code vein. No. 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 You're kind of on the right track though. Something vein, state vein. That don't make. I think come. about veins as more like the things that carry the blood, not that pump it. Oh, heart. Mm-hmm. Commonwealth state. blood pump. Something heart. I don't know what heart. I have no kingdom hearts. Yeah, kingdom hearts. Absolutely. Now, being from the south, you know a commonwealth is just another name for a state in the United <laughs> States of America. I yep. believe Virginia's commonwealth. Kentucky technically is commonwealth. And a kingdom. kingdom hearts. Uh, what's a kingdom other than a state? And the a municipality. Governor, and the governor is the king. Um, yeah. There you go. I guess. Yeah, you're not wrong. All right. <laughs> Two more. This one might surprise you. <laughs> Number eight, huh? Might surprise you. Cosmos attacker. Cosmos attacker. Cosmos Star attacker. Or galaxy space. Space Invader? It is Space Invaders, yeah. I, I thought know I that called bullshit on this one, and then I looked it up. Yeah. yeah. That's Space an old Invaders. school arcade uh, Pizza Hut at the table game. Yeah. <laughs> it's not no Square Enix game. <laughs> 2018, they recently released Space Invaders Extreme. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. All right, last one. Mausoleum Pirate. <laughs> All right. Mausoleum Pirate. So, Tomb... Raider. That is correct. Way to go. Good job, Adam. That is Games Gone Wild, Square Enix edition. We sound like we're just out on a Sunday after church drinking a, a well, there's only one kind of tea, and it's a sweet a tea. sweet tea, on yep. The, on the porch. Uh, this is this is the country. I'm sorry, Smitty. You're from Rhode Island. You don't know anything about it. Go down I'm south about, about 8,000 miles. <laughs> and I will stop now because I hate that. Accent. That is the end of Paula Dean. Hopefully, in real life as well as during this podcast. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's it for Game on Game Show. That is it for our podcast. Um, if you are on Twitch right now, watching us live, stick around. We will be doing. Um, oh my God, I'm burping a lot right now. We will be doing our barf episode for Batman: The Enemy, the Enemy Within right after this with DF and Smitty, who's been in the chat. Um. But if you are not watching live on Twitch, you have some very important homework right now to do, and that is to go play the game Gree. Why are we playing Gree, Adam? Well, good, good question, me. You let me answer that for you. Thanks, you. You got it. Uh, Gree is our barf game, spelled G-R-I-S because it's foreign. It's our barf game. Backlog accomplishment with Respawn and Friends where our patrons over at patreon.com slash Fire said, we want to listen to you guys talk about your reactions to the game Gree for the month of May. And I said, yeah. So you're going to play along with us. And it's like three, three and a half hours. So fucking play it. You have 30. It's a long month, 31 days. And you have a three day weekend with Memorial Day, everyone. So Ooh, no excuse too. not to play it. Play it. Be on the show with us to talk about it. Just like Dallas is going to be uh, for Batman. Uh, or just write in your thoughts via email at the end of the month. You can also go there to patreon.com slash fire where you can get uh, video game reviews, which Trek to Yomi won't be one of them because we decided that it wasn't worth all of that attention. But I'll talk to you offline about this, Adam, about maybe another game that's a possibility okay. for the near future. Uh, nice. Yeah, just go there, support us, vote on barf games every single month, get dope wallpapers for your devices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, Adam. It's the end of the show. It's the end of right episode there. 258. Whew. Until next time, here's our usual sign off. Sing of a man, a win! Well, I'm a cat. <laughs> Mountain Dew's hard. Mountain Dew is hard. That is Mountain Dew hard.
<laughs> I ain't no Mountain Dew soft drinker. We don't have no soft drinks around these No parts. soft drinks. <laughs> These fucking pissies. Um, all right, I'll stop the recording.